So first we have an ice cube as an example of a solid, water an example of a liquid, and evaporation as an example of gas. Solids particles are grouped and packed together so tightly they do not move. That is why, for, an, for instance, a brick would not be able to bend. A liquid's particles are able to move just slightly in place. They are still bunched together, but in a way, they sway a little. This is why water is able to flow and fill in any shape it is given. A gas's particles are not bunched together like a solid or a liquid. A gas's particles are always bouncing off of each other. They are evenly spaced and a bit more spread out than a solid or a liquid. That is why gas can take any form it is given. In order for a solid to transform into a liquid, there needs to be an increase in energy. By heating a solid, the particles start to gain more and more energy. The more energy the particles take, the more unstable they get. They start vibrating more and more intensely until they break hold of their solid form. Once a solid form is broken, the particles now become less packed and turn into a liquid form. This transformation from a solid to a liquid is called the melting process. Now for a liquid to turn into a gas, it is the exact same as a solid turning into a liquid, except you need to take one more step. In order for a liquid to turn into a gas, you need to add more heat to the particles to have even a more increase in energy. This is called the boiling process. As you boil water, evaporation starts to happen. The, the evaporation is the gas that is coming off of the water when the particles get too hot to keep their liquid form. Again, the particles start to vibrate and then eventually with enough energy slash heat, they break apart. That is how a liquid is turned into a gas. In order to reverse the process, you have to do the exact opposite. Instead of heating everything and getting the particles to increase in energy, now you're going to cool everything and have the particles decrease in energy. Now in order for a gas to turn back into a liquid again, you need to have the particles decrease in energy. This pr process is called condensation. When a gas touches a cold surface, the temperature of the gas is cooled down to where it turns back into a liquid. Your breath is condensation, for example. When you breathe onto something and it fogs up and becomes moist, the gas has touched something cooler than it is, so it turns into a liquid. That is condensation. When the particles from the gas are cooled down and decrease in energy, they start to slow down and become packed into place again. A liquid transforming back into a solid is the same principle as a gas transforming back into a liquid, except the particles need to, de to decrease in energy even more. This is called the freezing method. As a liquid's particles are cooled down even more, they freeze into place and become packed so tightly together until they cannot move anymore. This is how a liquid transforms into a solid.